Okay, so uh, Morgan Stanley has a bid of 15 and ask of 16, and they have a size. What is their minimum size? This is testable for both you ladies. So what is my minimum size I must display as a market maker? I have to be good for at least 100 shares. Oh, okay, yeah. Now, the real world, somebody would say, Dean, are you a market maker or a mouse? But, you know. So that they would like, okay, so... So nine by nine means nine. Morgan Stanley right now, if you call Morgan Stanley, are you looking at this chalkboard, this electronic chalkboard? Morgan Stanley says they're willing to buy 900 shares into inventory at 15 and willing to sell 900 shares out of inventory at 16. Mm -hmm. And again, very important for both of you ladies. This is the price at which the market maker buys. And this is the price at which the market maker sells. The quote is from the market maker's perspective. You know, so I always joke when a customer is looking at two prices, the customer always receives the low price and the customer always pays the high price. It's kind of like, called? is it a good analogy? Like a car dealer? Like That's what I always use, right? Okay. That's exactly right. And please note, car dealers, ladies, don't have a 5% policy. Yeah. And I don't think they have a code of conduct that we have about ethical behavior. If you're a car dealer and you're listening, I apologize. <laughs> but, you know, again, if you go into a car dealer, remember they charge markup and markdowns. Mm -hmm. They turn cars into money, right, or money into cars. And if I go in and say, how much for a Lincoln Navigator? And they go... You know, uh, 90,000. I go, great. Where's my 90 grand? Here's a navigator. They go, well, Dean, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. I thought you wanted to turn money into a navigator and I gave you my asking or offer price. Now I understand you want to trade it in 40 grand. I go, oh my God, what's that? I said, Dean, that's the spread. That's the difference between what I buy cars at and what I sell cars at. Here's Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs says they're willing to buy this in their inventory at 1505 and sell it out of their inventory at 1610. And again, the minimum size would be 10 by 10, or excuse me, 100, but let's say they're 10 by eight. And again, this is based on round lots. So that means that uh, Goldman Sachs is willing to buy 10 round lots into inventory, 1,000 shares at 1505, and sell 800 shares out of inventory at 1610. And let's say uh, Merrill Lynch is willing to buy this into their inventory at 1510 and sell it out of their inventory at 1615. Uh, this is testable for everybody. So if we can actually see this, that means we have a level two NASDAQ data feed. A level two NASDAQ data feed shows you the market makers and their quotes. Inside quotes. Okay, so this is a right. level two. And very testable. If you work at an order entry firm and your customer wants to sell this security, you should call Merrill Lynch. Because oh. they have the highest bid. Okay, you're looking for the highest bid and the lowest. To buy the security, you should call Morgan Stanley. Okay. Now, you, not everybody needs to see that. You know, my smartphone, for example, I don't need to see that. So level one NASDAQ would display the inside quotes. So it would be 1510. Sixteen. And the size would be here, six round lots. And nine. Right on, six by nine. That would be what uh, level one would display. That's called the inside quote again, the highest bid and the lowest ask. Um, now, if you call me at Merrill Lynch and you say, Dean, what's your quote? And I say 15, 10, 16, 15, six by five. And you say, Dean, we're selling 600 shares. I go, yeah, I don't think so. So when a market maker fails to honor a firm quote, what is that called? Backing away. Very much a test question. You were correct. Okay. Yeah, and you say, Dean, are you backing away? I say, yeah, what are you going to do about it? So what do you do if you have a trade practice complaint? 
You would report it to the MS MSRB. Is that who? No, you would report that under the code of procedure, the, the code of procedure, the Department of Enforcement, right? And I'll say, never mind, you're Phil. Okay. And then they're going to, you know, the Department of Enforcement calls me and says, hey, uh, all right, so here is uh, Jennifer's firm. Uh, let's say Jennifer, she's taken as 24. Let's say she works for a market making firm. And so here comes her firm. Or let's, I'm sorry, let's clear, let's give clear a market PID. And usually it's four, so there's Claire's um, thing. So Claire, if she can actually show up on that screen, her firm has test question a level three NASDAQ data feed. That actually lets you input quotes. So oh. here comes Claire. Remember, Claire is supervising. If it's not Claire, she's supervising what's called a series 57. Now she has to be a little careful here when she enters this quote that she doesn't walk or cross the market. Now this is 24, this is not seven. So this is for Claire, right? So Claire, if you're gonna go in or a bid on that system, you can only go to 1599, right? So you go to 16, you will have locked the market. You know, that locked market is when we have a bid that's higher than the ask. Now, I always tease in the real world, that wouldn't be a problem because you know, <laughs> the, you know, the other market makers would be on you. What you're supposed to do, Claire, if you want to go to 16, is call Morgan Stanley and say trade or move. You know, you know, if you want to sell at 16, I want to buy, you know. And then she shouldn't do this. As I said, this would mean she's really new, but she does that. Because mm -hmm. Morgan Stanley would be on her saying, Claire, why do you want to pay 1605? I'm willing to sell at 16. Well, I, you know, I'm, hey, I'm here for you. I don't know, Claire, did that you send me? I did get a crossed. request today. From somebody with a 24, I haven't got around to explicating it yet, uh, but they had uh, somebody who, a customer who gave them a limit order above the asking price, and then we would just fill you. And so I think that 24, Claire, was trying to figure out where that would go on on the side of the quote. I haven't got around to uh, getting back to them. But uh, you got to be careful when you enter the quote that you don't walk or cross that market, right? So that would be uh, something that you would be testing on is this idea of walking or crossing uh, the market. All right. So I think that's a nice overview of that screen. Now, Claire, you have to be a little more careful too, because uh, on your test, you're going to get tested on limit order protection. And so, you know, here's Claire again. And let's just put Claire back up here again. So, you know, she has a lot more stuff than on this than you do. But uh, she uh, is puts up her quote uh 14.99 uh 1610 uh 6 by 6 so i mentioned to you earlier claire your markdown there is a penny right your 5% question your markdown is a penny because the highest bid is 15 and so if you uh, mark that down to $14.99, then again, you would be, or excuse me, the highest bid is $15.10, it'd be 11 cent markdown. Okay. Right? And then your markup would be a 10 cents because the lowest ask is 16. Right? So that's what we were talking about, this inside market thing, about your markup and your markdown. Now, uh, Claire, you may have retail customers. And retail customers can really be kind of a, a problem. So, you know, these, this here is based on customer market orders. And if your customer has a limit order, one thing right off the bat is it's not the customer's job to tell you it's a limit order. In other words, if I click to Claire say to you, I want to buy X number of shares at a certain price, then that's a limit order. And in customer limit orders, it's actually gonna be on the same side of the market as you. So what I mean here is now, if we're looking at a customer buy limit, that's gonna be on the same side as your bid or a customer sell limit. So some market makers have customers, some do not. And having a customer can kind of be a jerk, uh, kind of a problem, right? So uh, Claire, you are the market maker in the security. 
and you receive a customer order to buy at 15. Damn. Your customer is willing to pay more for that security than you are. You're willing to pay $14.99, and the customer is willing to pay $15. Now, if this was a market order and the customer wanted to buy, we would just fill them at 16, or excuse me, 16.10 and be done with it. But this isn't a market order, it is a limit. limit. Order, right. And so now what you have to do if the customer gives you a 15 at 15. You have to update or display it. You have to tell the rest of the people out there. So let's just say it's a customer buy limit at uh, 15 and it's 800 shares. So then you as the market maker, you need to update your... That's right. From outside looking in. So what's going to happen here exactly? Yeah, my new quote, I'm going to update my display here. Do You know, I, I could fill them if I want, but I'm going to update the display. Let me just get my thing here. And outside looking in, this looks like it's me, but it's not. It's me displaying my customer limit order, right? So I'm going to now put uh, 15 here. And then I'm going to change this over here. This is now going to be uh, eight. Let me get rid of that. Oh, I mean, now you'd have to display that. And uh, we can even share that quote. What I mean by sharing the quote is I could go to 15.2 or I could go to 15.01. But now, Claire, let's say now uh, let's do the same as me. So now you're saying, Dean, uh, you want to buy 800 shares at 14.99 customer. So now, Claire, the customer is willing to pay the same price as you. So you get a customer limit order to buy 800 shares at 14.99. So now I have to update my display for 1,400 shares, 600 for me and 800 for the customer. And then I think the best way to think about this, Claire, is whatever I do for myself, I got to do for the customer. Yeah. 400 for shares for me. I get to take for, uh, care of 400 for my customer, right? Moving forward on that. Now, the one that I haven't had a chance to help somebody from our 24 class last week is they had a customer who put in a limit, a buy limit at like 1650. And we go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Why would you want to pay $16.50 when somebody's sitting at $16? Right? So that would be what we call an executable limit order. We would just, you know, we fill the guy and say, hey, we're here for you, man. We got you 50 cents of price improvement. You know, uh, we suggest you don't put in a buy limit above the whatever that bid is, right? <laughs> so, uh, so would you, in that case, like would you as the market maker need to reach out to the client and say, Hey, we'll fill it at 16. No, no, no. We would just fill it. Because okay. Remember, and you're required to just fill it because it's in the best interest. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if he gets mad at okay. me, I'm say, you know, customers can be difficult. I mean, you know, but you know, if he's mad, I'm gonna say, well, well, hold on. Yeah. We're upset that we got you 16 when you said you wanted 1650 or less. 16 is less. There's an implied or better. Mm -hmm. So the only time I have a liability to a customer is if I execute at like 16.55, then I would have a problem, right? Because he said he wasn't yeah. willing. So then we would have a problem. So um, 24 could be a real challenge. So I would I would tell you, Claire, and I mentioned it in class and I did a tutoring session today on 24. And again, I know your background, but the uh, she's a senior person today. I was tutoring. She's at a major mutual fund distributor and that could be a challenge. I mean, when you're a packaged product person, this isn't something people deal with day to day. Yeah, uh, it's a whole different kind of a uh, uh, universe. And the trading, and I warned you on the twenty-four, your trading, your banking, is the thing that's most alien to what most packaged product folks are doing. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're a packaged product person or what your background is, but you know, and even uh, you know, mom is a twenty-four, babysitting sevens probably found this part of the exam challenging. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's tricky. My background, I work in private wealth management. There so, you go. So probably not um, making. It's a, trading against your customers would be my guess. No. <laughs> <laughs> nope. And then remember, when we're trading against customers, which we are here, right? I mean, so again, it's okay. We just got to disclose it. I got to say, Claire, at Goldman Sachs, we are a broker dealer. And in some transactions you do with Goldman Sachs, we're going to be acting in our broker agency capacity. And on your behalf, we're going to get the securities elsewhere. In other transactions you do with Goldman Sachs, we'll be acting in our dealer principal capacity. 
We'll be charging a markup or markdown. We will never be a broker and agent in the same trade. We'll disclose this to you on your confirmation. But, you know, uh, there was a major guy. He's a you know, very famous, wealthy guy. And he left Goldman Sachs Wealth Management. And it, this is really bad. I mean, we disclose this stuff. But he said the reason he's leaving is every time Goldman calls him, he's not sure who they're calling on behalf of. Whether they're calling as Goldman Sachs dealer or his Goldman Sachs Wealth Manager. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh and again, I know that Goldman makes those disclosures, but uh, he was upset enough that he wrote a scathing essay, you know, and I man, you really got to tick off somebody to have him, you know, start writing a five page essay about yeah. uh, basically he wrote a, a, a Goldman Sachs client relationship summary <laughs> that we're now wow. and that we're now compelled to to give to people. But like I say, Goldman's a fine firm. I'm not saying, uh, you know, people get confused. Yeah, but for a client like you, you just might question the intention of the call or what the outcome. Yeah. And we you were, we were talking about banking again. So the one I always use Morgan Stanley is a fine firm, but you know, Morgan Stanley, I told you in Silicon Valley, they're 24 is a guy named Michael Grimes. And, you know, he raises money for uh, Elon for to take over X and he raises money for space, SpaceX and Tesla. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, he's Michael Grimes, uh, Elon has him on speed dial. And so you're entitled as a Morgan Stanley customer. Whoop. I don't know what I did there to know whether or not who's more important to Morgan Stanley. Is a retail Morgan Stanley customer, is Elon Musk more important to Morgan Stanley or you as a retail Morgan Stanley customer? And again, that would have to be disclosed. When you're reading a research report about Tesla, no surprise, it's probably going to be a buy recommendation. So yeah. You know, nothing wrong with that. Again, just needs to be disclosed, right? Sunlight yeah. is the best disinfectant. All right, let me stop that. Boom. All right. Any